All right, so got this uh, radiator and stuff all put back together, and uh, I wanted to show how I do the uh, coolant bleed process. Now, this has been one of those, I know everything, blah, 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 you don't know what you're talking about, points of contention for years, you know. Some people say, oh, just use an airlift. It works great every time. I've never had a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's not how it works, bud. Sorry. Sorry to tell you, but that's not, that's not how it works. Uh, and then you got the other guys that talk about, oh, just use the, the, the bubbly funnel. Yeah, that works too, but I use both, as you can see here, and I'm going to show you why. Because neither of these by themselves are completely 100% reliable because the problem with these engines is that the way the thermostat and the coolant system is designed you basically have to overheat the son of a bitch to get it to 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 circulate and bubble so this one the bleeder it has a bleeder but this one's totally stripped out so this is this is how i do it now obviously i got the funnel on there and this is an airlift that i uh have some fittings in here that are jb welded on there i've had this funnel for about 12 years actually there is my old one up there that was the uh, the first one, and I retired that one because I needed to bring one home, but since I don't work anywhere else now, I just bring all my stuff home. So, as you can see, this is full. There's an entire gallon of concentrate in there. You know, Mopar, I don't use AutoZone crap. So there's a gallon of concentrate in there, and there's about three quarters of a gallon of water in there. So... We're gonna do is close this valve. This is gonna get loud, so plug your ears. Actually, I'm gonna turn this so you can see it better. Ah, oh, look, five balls. So now we open it up, let the stuff go down. See, it took a whole bunch more. So that just shows you how much air is actually in here. Now you can also kind of grab hold of the hose here and. You can kind of feel the coolant in there, so we're going to go ahead and do this again. And my lid is popping off because it got way too hot last time I did this. Bubbles. 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 See, we're at, uh, I don't know, the gauge is broken, but see? Bubbles. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a gallon of concentrate and a gallon of water in there. So what does that give us? That gives us a 50-50 mixture, right? Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit. I guess it really wasn't a full gallon, so I'm just gonna add some more. Now usually when I do this, I don't like to fill it all the way up because once you start it and run it, uh, the coolant's going to expand and it's going to want to push this out. So I try and keep the fluid level right about here. So there we go. That's a gallon of concentrate and a gallon of water. I know there's, there's going to be somebody that says it. So you got to use distilled water. No, no you don't. I live way out in the woods, and I have a well, and so I just use the well water. It doesn't have chlorine in it. So before you, and also before you run off the to the keyboard, start yelling that I don't know what I'm doing. Go work at a dealership for 20 years, and then and then tell me. Don't don't talk about your your grandpa's neighbor's cousin's roommate's parakeet was a coolant guy back at the dealership back in the 50s, and he taught you everything. Just shh, just just fill the thing. You'll be fine. Trust me. Look, more bubbles. See, there we go. Now we can kind of tell how much more it's going to take by how much air it sucks in after the coolant goes down. Okay. So, now we've just demonstrated that Filling it the funnel way never really gets it all the way. And now we've just uh, shown that the airlift way doesn't do it all the time. You have to do this multiple times. Wow, that's that's loose. That's where the that air is coming from. I have, to, I have to fix that later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more. All right, here we go. Another gallon. 
concentrate. See, it's taking it because there's airspace in there now. Okay, so I know we're getting close to the fill here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then I know there's going to be somebody else that runs to the keyboard and says, You got to mix it together in ratios before you pour it. Shh. Just shut up. I don't want to hear it. Tired of, tired of the warriors that know everything trying to tell me that I don't know what I'm doing. The truth is, you don't know what you're talking about. You can do it that way if you want, but just keep it to yourself because I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of it. Bubbles. Ooh, okay. Well, looks like we're going to need some mo. Mo, mo, mo. See, now we're just approving again. Uh, here, here you go. Here, here's for the warriors. Was that, was that right? Is that, is that how you do it? So we're getting close. We're going to keep doing this until it stops taking it. This lid is so messed up. All right, we'll close our valve here. Well, would you look at that? It wants mo. Another thing to be aware of is that a lot of times these things wear out on the seal and you'll end up getting bubbles through here that kind of gives you a misreading. You can feel it in the hose when it, when it starts getting close. You can also you can also watch it to see if the level changes. If there's still air in it, the level won't change, and you won't you get this little spurt like that. See, that's how you know it's getting close. Just a little bit too much in here. On this stupid lid. Might be time to get a new one. More bubbles. end up spending more time fighting with this lid than actually getting anything done here. So what you can see here is what I was trying to show you is that even if you use your airlift, you're never going to get the right amount in there. Never. Never, ever, ever. Okay, we're getting close now. 
This is actually almost perfect. It's all wore out. Everything's wore out here. Okay, now you can see that we're not getting any more bubbles out and it's just returning to the same level. Which, as you can see, happen to just miraculously for some reason line up to be at the exact perfect height that I like to keep it. Which is astonishing, that never happens. Okay, so we'll put this in its holy spot. Now what we're going to do is we need to start it and run it, but the other thing is I need to fill the power steering. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. ATF plus foe. That's what you use. Now, what will happen here is we'll get everybody that says, Oh, just fill it and start it. And then, and then it, uh, turn it off and then fill it and start it. But you get bubbles in it. Okay, so we're going to fill it. I'm going to grab a flashlight. I'm going to fill it about two-thirds of the way. All right, so now we got our hose clamp tight on there. Just kind of checking for any leaks coming out of there, which I don't see. Don't see any coolant coming out there. Don't see any coolant coming out there. Okay. So I had a guy post on one of my videos a while back. He said, uh, why do you still have that old junk lift? I have a brand new rotary in my shop. Well, let me show you something. See that? That's half inch plate angle, angle, angle iron right there. See that? This is five eighths. This entire column is half inch. Okay, see? Half inch plate. Half inch plate. You know, that's why this whole carrier assembly is three eighths. This is three eighths with three eighths plug on it. This is why the new challengers and the rotaries this stuff is made out of three sixteenths and you can actually watch the columns bend in when you pick cars up that's why i still have this old lift in here because i could make two new lifts out of this old one see it's got chains it doesn't have cables the only thing that's three sixteenths is the the top part of the carrier group here but i mean yeah, so that's why I have this old lift in here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Now, normally, somebody would just start it up. But what we're going to do is kind of similar to what we just did before with the, uh, the coolant. So this is what the cap looks like. It's got a seal on it. So what I did was took one of these, drilled a hole through it, and I put a fitting in it. So I'm going to screw this guy on there like that. See? Just like that. So you could also use one of these if you wanted to. They make different sizes. This is a Mighty Vac. Stick that hose inside this hose. And stick this little rubbery hose there. And we're just going to give her a couple pumps until we see fluid come out, which didn't take long at all. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let, let it in. Now see, it sucked it down. I think I put too much fluid in there originally. I think that's the problem. Hear the gurgles? Okay, well, we're starting to get somewhere. Okay. There we go. 
it's almost empty now. Okay, perfect. Just fall on the ground, because why wouldn't you fall? Why wouldn't you just stand up there? You just you just have to fall on the ground, because, you know, why not? Okay, so now we have a whole quart in there already. Stand up. Okay. This again. Now you'll be able to feel it gurgling with your hand. Let it go. Just keep rinsing and repeating. I know the camera's not going to be able to pick that up, but it's taking it down. If anybody's got any suggestions on better camera equipment than my Insta360, let me know. Let me know what you use. Okay. That's a good starting point. Now, no matter what we do, there's always going to be bubbles in this. Always. No matter what. So now what we're going to do is panic and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it and hopefully the camera doesn't fall. And I'm gonna almost shut it off almost immediately. Did you hear how it sucked it? Oh, there goes the mix motor. The defrost door. Oops. See all those bubbles down in there? That's what we're trying to prevent. Trying to prevent the pump from cavitating, which is what that is. If your WJ makes that noise, it's totally fine. So, no matter what you do, you're always going to get bubbles. It's always going to pick it up like that. There's just nothing you can do to completely prevent it. But at least this way, we can get enough fluid in there to where it's not going to just be running dry. Because we don't want the pump to run dry right off the bat. <clears throat> That is bad news bears. See? We got circulation. And it's not all bubbly. Well, there are some bubbles in there, but we have prevented it from completely getting bubbly. Right, and then we can see the fan is spinning, which means that the fluid's getting in there. That's loud. So by doing that, we've just saved ourselves a whole bunch of work. And now we just gotta sit here and wait for this to start bubbling. While this is getting warm, I'm going to hook up the AC machine. Need to fill up my bottle, but refrigerant's $400 a keg right now. Yes, $400 for one of those. So we're going to go vacuum. Vacuum time. Leak test. Nope. Oh, okay. Alright, so it's been about 10 minutes and we're starting to get bubbles coming out. See? So there's still bubbles in there. Even though we did the funnel and the airlift. You see the fluid starting to rise up too, which means that it's expanding. The thermostat's getting ready to open. See? More bubbles. More bubbles. See? This just goes to show you that no matter what you do or what you think you do, you always have to knock the camera over on yourself first. See? Bubbles. Bubbles. Give a little bit of gas. There's our pump whining. Oh, look.
look, bubbles. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so we're going to charge up the AC now while that's doing its thing. Oh look, more bubbles. Presser should kick on any second now that there's refrigerant going in there. What are those? Are those bubbles? That is so weird. Now that the AC is on, the uh, hydraulic fan is going to ramp itself up, but as soon as the AC is charged, we're going to turn the AC back off. We don't want the fan running right now. Oh, look at those bubbles. Isn't that weird? So weird. So weird. So I always keep this guy handy because if this starts coming up, you want to plug it and turn the engine off so it can cool down. It's like 95 degrees outside. My AC unit in the wall worked for one day and then died. So now this thing's hot. I'm going to have to open the door here in a minute, unfortunately. Always want to make sure you put all your tools away before you pull the car out. Wow, are those more bubbles? Wow, 
I guess that pretty much sums it up. Oh look, more bubbles. So there we go. We used the funnel, we used the airlift, and now that the thing is hot, it's still putting out air bubbles. So that proves that um, the airlifts don't work 100%, and the funnels don't work 100%. You have to use the funnel in the long run to sit here and do this, and it takes, well shit, I mean we're going on, how long is this video? How long is, uh, 13, but we're going on 45 minutes of this, so. It just proves you that uh, you can't just flat rate it all the time. Fill up the overflow bottom, pull it out. So there you go. 